Hello everyone, I hope you guys are doing well and having a wonderful week. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a buzz cut inside Blender. This process is quite easy and straightforward. And if you're going to stay to the end, I'm going to be showing you how you can create eyebrows and eyelashes with the new geometry node hair. In this tutorial, I'll be using the hair brick add-on tool for Blender. You can find it on the Blender market. Don't be discouraged though. Everything you're going to see are things you can do with the Vanilla Blender. I just use Hebrew because it kind of makes it easier. Uh, it's a very artist management tool to drive us the complexity of the Geometry Node system. So let's get started. We have our asset here in the 3D viewport and a couple of things you want to kind of check before you go ahead and start creating hair is you want to make sure you have your UV map so we can Go to our UV editor and enter edit mode. And we can see this asset has a very good UV map. And if you have a good UV map, you can proceed to the next stage. You also want to pay attention to the name of your UV because if you're using geometry node, for the most times you'll be calling upon your UV names to use as a driver for applying textures um, when needed. Now we can select our asset and go to add curve empty hair. Once you've added a hair, there are a couple of ways which you can use to generate hair. The first is making sure you have your curve selected and going into sculpt mode. Or if you work with hair brick, you could either select the object and just click on this brush icon and it takes you to the sculpt mode of the selected curve. You can bring out your tool panel and switch to either add to draw hair or you could use density to populate the hair. The other method for generating hair is using geometry nodes. So I'll remove this. And we can use, or well, make sure you select your hair curve. So you can use the hair generation, generate hair. So you select the object and it generates uh, so you increase the density so let's set this to like 10,000 and then you can see the hair you can play with the length um, then if you want to kind of mask out certain regions you'll probably have to um, go into the node editor to kind of play with that but if you're using hair break you can click on generate and it does that with everything set up for you so we can play with the length but let's mask out where we want the hair to be generated from. So we can call this hair mask. And you can choose the resolution of your image, which is going to be a 2K texture. Add this to white and hit OK. Now we can click on this brush icon. It's going to take us straight into the texture paint mode where everything is going to be set up for us. So all you need to do is just come and paint. I'm going to set this to black. Black means there's hair. You can always invert the selection in any situation where you kind of mess it up. So you can always invert. With your X metric turned on, we can basically draw out where we want the hair to be generated from. Once you're done drawing out the mask, you can go ahead and save your image by going to image, save all images. This is going to store the image within the blend file and then you can unpack it later. Or well, you can also go to the UV editor to export it there. So let's go back into the object mode. With our mask created and we've isolated the region we want the hair to be generated, we can tweak this to fit what this, we can give ourselves a nice starting point. For the length, I'm going to set this to 0 0.012 because I want it to be very short hair since we are creating a boss haircut. For the density, you can go ahead and increase it. If you notice, the hair radius is quite thick, um, which depends on the um, object scale or the scene scale. So you can address them with the hair radius. So one thing we do when you use hair break is we um, switch your, this is the fault uh, which you get, but we switch it to stri um, stripe so that uh, you can be able to preview your hair radius while um, grooming your hair. So you can already start seeing the final result. We also increase the curve subdivision. So if you're starting out and you're not getting very smooth looking hair, you probably want to come to the curve subdivisions for the viewport display and increase that. But once you do that, you should get a very more appealing looking hair. 
So for the hair radius, uh, we can set this to 0 0.02. If you're using the vanilla blender, you can come here, hair, um, and guide. You should be able to see hair radius somewhere there. So you can input that node and have access to the parameter. Okay, so at this point, we can go ahead and increase the density just to give us some enough hair to kind of groom. And once you're happy, we can always go back on this, uh, but once you're happy at the stage, you can go ahead and hit apply. So it's necessary that when you, when you use a generation node, you apply the, the node before proceeding because that's the only way you can be able to sculpt on the hair. Now we can select the comb. We can click on this comb, which is one way to go into the sculpt mode, or like I showed you, you can use this. Now we are going to use the comb to start grooming, but you will notice as we groom, the hair penetrates. You can use the collision, but for some reason, um, Blender, um, it, you get buggy re result when you use the generate, um, generate node in Blender. So our solution for that is a modifier called collision. So if you select this object as a collision, um, it's going to basically <laughs> act as a collision. So let's turn on our X symmetry so that we can walk both ways. By the way, this panel here, you can access it by right clicking, going to header, show to settings. So I have mine set as Alt F1 shortcut, so you would see me flipping between it. So with X symmetry turned on on our brush set to sphere, which is basically a 3D brush where it only affects the re region where you're grooming. If you have it set as projected, it's going to basically um, like affect everything. So for sometimes you want that flood brush or that kind of projected brush or sometimes for the most part you want the 3D brush. So now we will just um, groom our guide hair to make it look good. If you're using the collision node as say something like this, um, what you need to do is to reduce the offset. So we we'll set this to 0.01 or probably something less so that uh, we kind of give ourselves some room to come close to the mesh without getting that artifact. Okay, so we'll just groom this guide hair. You can take a lot of time as needed to get something that works for you. Of course, it's be advised that you use you work with reference, that you get um, something looking quite realistic. Okay, so once you're done, I, I kind of rushed this, but you probably want to take more time with yours. Uh, one quick fix, we can add the smooth node, just to smooth everything up. Uh, you can see it without. So the smooth node will help you kind of clean it up to remove any jagged edges. So I subdivided the mesh and we got this artifact. To fix it, you just move the collision under the surface deform of the hair node. So that's one way to fix it. So it kind of evaluates the surface of the geometry before it evaluates the collision. So that's how you basically want to look at this node stack with Blender. The Blender will evaluate the first one before the last one. Okay, so once you're happy with this, um, we need to add more children because if we render, this will be quite sparse, except we increase the radius, which we actually need to reduce some more. So we need to add children here. So with that, you can use geometry node here, generate, um, generate interpolated hair. So this is, if you add interpolated hair, then you can get the children hair, but you also have to create mask to mask out the region. So the children hair here we have two, which is a simple duplicate, which you can adjust the radius to fit nicely. Uh, we can put even thickness, rounded tips to one. So it's basically duplicating each curves. Um, so this is one way we can do it, or we can use the interpolated and we'll use the mask that we created earlier. And let's give this like 500. And it's going to create the hair. 
at this point if you want to trim if you want it to be cleaner um, you can go in we can use this and let's make the fall off a bit more crisp on, on my occlude and let's actually sh switch the color to white Okay, so for a boss haircut, this is quite long. So let's go to the modifier and under effect, we'll find a trim. I'm going to disable the subdivision for now, kind of messing stuff up. Uh, but you kind of know the solution. You just, one thing we can do is we can move the surface deform as the first node. So we don't worry about that okay and you can probably add another sub surface from at the bottom maybe something i'll look into uh but by default is set the surface deform is set to be the last node because if you have your character animated um let's duplicate this can we move this down here i was getting that issue um i will look into working with this and Probably something that can be fixed, but anyways, um, that's a quick solution for that. You just move the collision um, before after the surface deform. But anyways, let's go. So we want to add the trim to kind of trim it for um, to match like a boss cut. So we can do 0.7 to trim the entire hair to look a bit shorter. Okay. And the next, I want to, like, if I buzz fade, we'll get, like, a nice, we want to kind of fade it out from this position, probably, around here. So to do that, we can duplicate this trim modifier. One of the subdivision. So we'll duplicate this trim modifier. And... We we'll probably double click and rename it and call it fade. So we'll set it to one since we want everything by default. So we'll click on use mask and click on new mask. Or we can call this fade and click on OK. So nothing is going to happen um, because you need to paint where you want to fade. So we'll go into the texture paint mode since everything is black. Let's go to the, our viewport. We can switch this to studio so we can be able to see stuff with the specularity. And for the fall off, we want to switch it to this that has more fall off. So it's going to look something like this. It provides more fall off. Let's see the stroke it's using space, which is good. Okay, so I'm also going to turn on, turn off occlude and call that we can paint through the mesh so basically if i paint here it's going to paint through the mesh so this is uh, if i paint here it's painting through the mesh so that's what i want because it's easier and i can just drag drag it like this to give that nice fade and I'll go ahead and save the image and here we go so with the, this fade trim you can control like the intensity so it set this point 0.8 it loses more hair you set it to a lower value you kind of get more hair the length of the effect of the fade is less so let's go with point 0.8 it's more obvious uh, let's say we want to give it like a nice line going this way so we can add a cut node go ahead and save the scene so the cut only works with texture so it's only texture based so let's create new and call this um, so we can invert the texture I will turn off X symmetry for now and we go to stroke we can select line 
and we can just drag out that line. But before I do that, I want to make sure that I have my occlude and coil turned on. So probably need a more harsher tone. So it's gonna cut through. So here yeah, we can go ahead and save this, and we have that line going for us. Um, you can move things around. So see if so I want to make this more pronounced. Okay, so I like it much better now. It's more obvious. So I want it to t taper slightly at the end. Okay. So this is what we have. And yeah, at this point, you have your main hair set. And you can like go in and start messing up. I'm um, added more randomization in it. So one thing I can do is to add the roll styling to just break it up even more. I'll put it below the um, cut. Increase the factor to two, and the roll length to like point six. So just playing with values will kind of give you a random effect as you can see here it's not as clean as before you can still achieve this probably with noise i will reduce the factor so it's not so obvious zero one okay and you can probably add clumps if necessary or free hair. So for free hair, if we want to add that, we can search for free under the styling and immediately it kind of pushes other hair out. We can reduce the fall off so that just few hair and let's reduce the intensity of it. So probably 0.4. Okay, and then let's add the, the follow up. We'll probably give this point seven. So it's kind of tweaking it to kind of see how we make it work. Um, right now, we see they are not, they are, above, they are just flying away. Uh, we can add in operation, we'll add snap to mesh and select this mesh as a surface. Uh, it's going to snap the hair. Okay. It's looking good and Probably going to remove the snap to mesh. I mean, you can play with things, but it's kind of messing up what I have going here. Anyway, so um, that's the basic workflow of creating a boss haircut. So let's play with this color. I'm going to set it to black. Um, probably increase the radius slightly. Um, that's one way to add density. And we can increase the density to like 1000. Adjust the skin color. Okay. okay. It's coming together nicely. Uh, with more tweaking and more financy, you can really get it looking how you want it to look.
So this is just like a brief introduction if you're looking to create a bus cloth with a nice fade. So we'll go ahead and render this. So here's the result. Um, you can see it turned out really good. Um, I'm using subdivision for the model. Um, but one thing I did was to move the collision to the last node after the surface deform. And should have it looking good. Okay, um, I know usually I usually get a question of how would you make this a game here, or how would you send this to Unreal, especially if you're working with texture card. Um, the way to do that, uh, we can turn off X, um, the children here, and probably add like a plane. And let's add some edge loops for deformation. Probably less. Okay. And we'll create a quick material for this. Okay, and in texture paint mode. This I mean you have for this you have you need like a real haircut texture, but I just wanna kind of show you guys a quick especially for a very simple hair like this. So you can probably just draw out some hair strands or like a texture card. Okay. And we'll go ahead and save that image. Let's open our node editor. And material preview. In the for EV preview, I'm gonna to go to viewport and set this to alpha clip and use this also as the alpha. Better still, I will add a shader mix and then transparent and use this as alpha. I'm gonna set the spec roughness to zero I'll set the IOR of IOR for the clarity to zero and the color I'll just leave it as black since or any color you want basically so once you have this let's move this into a new collection I'll call this hair collection probably scale it down slightly and we can select this and go into the modifier stack and add in effects we want to add instancer so we want to instance that hair collection and turn off 3d mode uh, we want to scale it down so we want to get scale uniform maybe 0.1 You scale it down till it fits the hair. Okay. Um, probably we could add a little more. The children. Probably don't need to add. Um, let's go with like 20. 50. I'm going to reduce the trim so it's a bit longer okay so you can kind of see um, what's going on basically if you plan this ahead of time it will be easier to kind of set up so you worry about the length of the hair. If you watched the previous video, you can see how you can go ahead and do this. So I think I will rotate this 180 degrees. We we'll probably have to. We will probably paint the scalp a black color. Yeah, but at this point, it's just kind of tweaking till you get something that looks nice. 
the render. Okay, so cycles we previewed well because it casts shadows. Um, maybe like 100. Well, yeah, if you want to export it to Unreal, uh, this is one way to kind of go about it. You'll use instance and apply a texture card, and then you can be able to make it work. Okay, so um, that's that for if you're looking to export it. Or you could, if I, I know Unreal almost some supports like spline hair now, so you can probably explore that. Okay, so let's go back to our initial hair. That is back to 1000. So like I said, I'm going to show you how to create eyebrows. So for the eyebrows, we'll create a new hair. And so before we continue to improve the viewport performance, we can select this hair and go to the viewport amount and set it to 0 0.01 just so that we get faster feedback. I'm going to click on generate hair, create new, you can call this brows. Go into texture paint and let's make sure it's completely white. Okay, so once you have that, uh, we can now paint where we want the eyebrows to be. So that's, if you have a reference, it will be more helpful, like a mesh reference. So you could, like I said, you could draw it in manually or you could generate it. Um, I found generating it makes it appear cleaner. Okay, so now we'll add more density. So because of the small area of the texture, um, that's why we're getting low amount. So we'll probably need a lot of amount to make it work. Let's reduce the line to 0 0.002. And the radius, reduce it a bit. Raise the line slightly. So you want just enough guide hairs that you can use to accurately um, confirm your hair. Um, because if you add little, when you add like a children particle, it's not going to, it's, it, it needs to follow a guide hair. And if your guide hair are not get showing it enough, then it probably will not look good. So now we can just groom this. I'm kind of working off my head, but um, advisable you use reference so you get the best result. Okay, so once you're done, we can. Go to the hair radius, set the minimum factor to zero so we get like a nice taper. Probably reduce this slightly. Okay, and then we can add children. Use interpolated and use eyebrows. That is still like 600, 1000, or 5000. That's probably a lot, so let's reduce it. Okay, so that's that for the eyebrows. For the eyelash, um, we'll create a new 
pack of. So you can double click and name this if you want to keep things organized. Uh, I think I added modern accessory. So we can control click and call this um, lash. So for the lash, I'm going to actually draw it by hand. So I'm using the add brush. And we have to kind of debug or at, at least find, find out the length that will work for us. So for that, we'll go to the curve shape, 0 0.01, and see what that does or looks like. But this is a bit long, so 0 0.08. And now make sure you have symmetry turned on. And I'm going to go to the view and reduce it so I can go closer. Okay. So we want to. Add this. Okay, and we can grab the comb. When we use projected in this instance, I can just move everything all at once and then adjust them. Okay, so I'm done kind of laying down the guide heads. Just adjusting them. Okay. And we can use the trim. That is the point five. Um to like really trim it down. I think I should have used sh a shutter F at the bottom, so I'm going to delete them. So you're just placing them by clicking. Okay, so I'm not fine tune that so that we can just hurry with this. We can get the snake hook brush. And just pull them out slightly. Okay, so for the next stage, we can use some noise. And reduce the factor, or probably not this noise. Let's try simple noise. Uh, reduce the scale. Not working either. Freeze. Okay. Okay, just I want to kind of mess it up slightly. And then I'm going to use children hair. Reduce the radius to 0 0.01. And let's add the clump. So you want to play with the guidance distance. So the lower the value, the more it will break it into clumps. So we set this to like one or like point point zero five. You see the clump size. So if you have smaller value, you have smaller clumps. I'm gonna set this to zero. It's not so obvious. Um, for the roundness tip, set it to one. Try even thick thickness, and probably reduce the radius slightly. And there you go. 
So let's give this all like a black color. Or you could um, like copy link other materials for the hair. Yeah, so they all share the same material. Okay, so that's that for the eyebrows and the eyelash. We can go ahead and render this and see how it looks. Yeah, so this is the final resort. Um, and check out, check it out. I hope this tutorial was informative. Uh, if you wished, if you learned something, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you wish to see more from me, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you would like to get this tool, the link will be in the description to get your own copy. Uh, so bye bye for now. See you next time.